Hey everyone, this is QA Shahin and today we are going to look at expect. We're going to look at what is expect and how to use expect when we write Jasmine tests. So the agenda of this video session is going to be very very simple. We are going to look at expect. So what is expect? Expect is essentially a way of validating and confirming that your code or the condition that you're writing your test for is in an expected state and the expect statement is usually one of the last things that you write as part of your test so in previous videos we were using console log to validate whether a test has passed or not but what that meant was we were physically checking to see whether a test has passed or not expect is a mechanic that allows us to actually see whether a test has passed or not where the test will tell you itself either a pass state or a fail state so in the previous video we touched on using an expect statement and in this video we're going to look at many ways in which we can use the expect statement so in the previous video we wrote a very simple calculator class and then we had two tests and in the test, all we did was we created an instance of that calculator class, which only had two methods, an add method, which added two numbers and returned the value, and a minus method, which subtracted one number from the other and then returned that value. We then wrote two tests for it in a describe block, which effectively tested the add and the minus methods. But if we just subtract this information for a moment so if we do something like this then we can see the structure of this particular type of expect statement it is simply saying expect something to be something so this is a very simple way of writing an expect we also looked at the expect passing and failing so really quickly, let's actually see this running. So what we're saying is adding one and three to be five. So we know it's not five. We know one and three is going to be four. And similarly, subtracting four from six will be two. But in this instance, we're saying one. So what we're going to do is quickly run this test and expect to see both these statements fail. So I'm going to navigate to the project and I'm just going to say Jasmine to run the test. And we can see that there were two failures. We expected the four to be five, which is why this failed. And we expected the two to be one, which is why this failed also. So if we change these values, so if we change the five to a four and if we change the one to a two and save it and rerun the test, then we can see everything now passes. So as said, expect is a way of confirming the functionality of whatever it is that you're testing. And when you run the test, the console output itself will tell you the number of specs which passed versus the number of specs which failed. In other words, you don't have to go and validate anything for yourself. The test will do it for you. Now, let's take this a step further. There are many different ways of writing an expect expect something to be something is one such way so we will use the calculator class to write some more expect statements so first of all let's clean this up a bit let's get rid of all of these comments and let's also remove the test to check for the minus numbers okay so another statement that we can write is almost the reverse of this statement which is the not to be something and the way we can write this is by simply saying not to be a number so we can say one plus three is expected to be four but we can say we expect it not to be something else so for example five so this is now going to check to see that when we add one and three the number that is returned should not be five but this is simply another way of writing that test. 
we can also use another similar expect, which is instead of to be, we can say to equal. Now, what this will do is check to see that when we add these two particular numbers, they equal another particular number. In this case, 1 plus 3 is going to be, in fact, 4. Some other expects to look at would include to be less than. So in this case, 1 plus 3 is 4. So we let's just say we want 4 to be less than 5. The reverse of less than would obviously be to be greater than. So instead of less than, we can check for greater than. So 1 plus 3 is going to be 4. Let's just say something like 3. Okay, so let's go back and quickly run our test just to make sure that we are okay so far. So we can see that none of the tests have failed. In other words, our expect statements are correct. We can easily blend in the not value as well. So for example, we can do something like this. We can now say not. And in this instance, we will say 1 plus 4 is not to be less than 5. Obviously, that's incorrect. So we'll say something like 3. And in here, we will reverse it to something like 5. If we save this and run this, then we can see our test pass. So the idea is, in this instance, although we're using to be, to equal, to be less than, to be greater than, in conjunction with the not part of the expect statement, we can see they're all doing more or less the same thing. But the important thing to understand here is Jasmine is trying to promote readability. It's trying to promote us to be able to write our expect statements in such a way that it becomes easier to understand what it is that you're checking. So for example, in this case, because we're using a calculator class, it would make sense to use expect statements such as to equal or to be less than or to be greater than versus something like to be. To be is something that we may want to reserve for say object comparisons, but for numeric comparisons, maybe using something like to equal or be to less than and so on would be more suitable. The whole reason why we have effectively all of these different flavors of expect statements is to help us use ones which allow us to promote the ability to read the expect statements in such a way that it just logically makes a little bit more sense. There are others we can use as well. So for instance, we've created this class called calculate, which is an instance of the calculator class. We can actually write tests around object instantiation as well. So for example, we could write something that allows us to check that we were able to declare the calculate the calculator class. So for example, we can say something like expect calculate to be defined. Or we can use something like expect calculate not to be undefined. Also, we can say something like calculate not to be null. Let's quickly run this test just to make sure it's all okay. And we can see previously it only picked up the one it block, now it's picked up two, but more importantly, all the tests have passed. So these are another flavor of expect statements that we can use which should be reserved for checking the validity 
of class instances as opposed to checking things like numeric values or whether a function returned the correct state of an object or anything like that. This makes more sense to use as part of object instantiation on object creation and so on. Now finally one more thing to check would be another set of expect statement that Jasmine provides us with which are the expect string matches. So let's quickly write something that returns a string And let's return something like this is a calculator class and in our test we're going to say something like should be able to check the description of the class now Usually no one would write a method that returns a description of a class. It's just not something you would really do as part of any kind of software development. We're simply writing this just to quickly see this last flavor of expect statements that we can write. So in this case, I'm going to say expect calculate uh, description to match and then we can provide a substring. So in this case, let's say something such as class. Now, when we call this method in the calculate class, this returns this string here. This is a calculator class. So all we're saying is we're expecting this particular thing to match as a substring, whatever this method returns, which in this case is going to be this is a calculator class string. There are a couple of others we can use as well. So for example, we can use something like expect calculate description to contain and then some string in here. So in this case, let's just use the word calculator. And let's quickly save this and run this. And we can see this test passed as well. So here are a number of different ways of writing expect statements in Jasmine, which help us to define and validate behavior of code. We can use these different types of statements to help us promote readability when we write our expectations for our code. So what have we done in this video? So in this video, we quickly started by looking at what an expect statement is and why you would write one. And we also looked at a number of examples of writing expect statements and more importantly, seeing how they can be used to help promote writing code that is easy to read and easy to understand. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next video.